I wish he had said, I wish he'd be generous with his time <laughs> instead of the use of it. <laughs> this has been an inspirational meeting indeed. It's a privilege and blessing to all who have been here and attended this meeting and listened and who will apply what they have heard. Our challenges and opportunities and our blessings are great and unnumbered. And there is no greater power in all the world than the power of God delegated to the priesthood holders of the Church, if we will but magnify the priesthood which we hold. Sister Tanner and I have just returned from visiting our mission, four missions in the, and one stake in Japan, all of which are presided over by Japanese. One couple were never were natives who were born and raised there all their lives and have filled missions in Japan, doing a great job. We visited a mission in Korea and one in Hong Kong, each of which is presided over by Americans who had filled missions only 10 or 12 years ago. In fact, all the mission presidents, or six of the mission presidents, have served in the areas where they now preside and five of the wives. It thrilled me to see the marvelous work being done by these missionaries <clears throat> throughout these great countries, to see the growth, the quality, and devotion of members old and new, most of whom are young people, 20 to 35 years of age, and all as a result of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Outstanding leaders were observed in every mission and in the stake, and great strides are being made we had from 300 to 1,000 people attending the meetings of the members. And one cannot help but have every confidence in the future growth and strength of the Church there. There is a great spirit in every meeting. The impressions I received while I was there were that these devoted, able, humble, prayerful, effective missionaries the boys who have developed into men, men with courage, understanding leadership ability, ambassadors of the Lord, admired and loved and respected by the members, carrying heavy responsibility, filling all of our leadership positions and training others to fill these positions, such as branch presidents, heads of auxiliaries, teachers, etc., encouraging and strengthening the weak, administering to the sick. One bore testimony of a miraculous healing which he had experienced where he was the one who gave the blessing to, this in, in, to his father. They're baptizing, confirming, and ordaining. They're men and women with testimonies who have met and overcome temptation and evil. Men who will come home prepared and ready and able to accept any position in the ward or state men who have felt important and have been important, men who will strengthen, inspire, and give leadership to your wards and stakes and inspire your youth if you will just give them an opportunity to do so, men deeply concerned about inactive members, men deeply concerned about anyone who had a problem and were trying to help them solve it. This is one group of men and I'd like to refer to the servicemen, and many of them are doing great work. We met some while we were in Korea and in Osaka. And these young men, many of them, are doing a tremendous work in the Church. When I was holding a meeting with the missionaries, I asked for all who are 24 years of age to stand because that's the age Joseph Smith was when the Church was organized. Five stood at this meeting. And I asked one of them to come up and tell us how he happened to be a member of the church, how he came into the church, and to bear his testimony. He said he was in the armed services in Korea, or in uh, Vietnam, and that while there he met some of our young men, one in particular who is a member of the church, and as a result of his living and his teaching in the gospel, he was now a member of the church, and what a great difference it had made in his life how he had repented of what he had done and how he saw a cause and understood the purpose of life. And then I asked the other four, and two of them told me the same thing without 
me calling them up to bear their testimony that they had joined the church in the armed services. It's a thrilling experience to see these young men who are devoted, who have testimonies of the gospel, and have the courage to live and teach the gospel and bear testimony, whether they're called as missionaries or whether they're in the armed services. And to see how they were able to bring people into the church, and people who regarded them very highly. One was a university professor, another successful businessman, man, two outstanding doctors, one of which was a heart surgeon. It's most humbling to see these men I praise the work of the young men who had brought them into the church and had influenced their lives and who bear a testimony of the great things that the gospel has done for them since they joined the church. In fact, I was greatly impressed by the leadership they have in each of every of these state, every mission and in the stake. I appeal to these returning missionaries and to these men who are returning from the military service and to the bishops and stake presidents to see that these young men, when they return from their tour of duty, are given an opportunity to serve. And to the young men, your study and your devotion and experience have prepared you for real service in the work of the Lord. Thank the Lord for the privilege you've had of testing your lives and proving your testimony. Never feel that you have completed your and finished your tour of duty in the church service. You've only prepared yourself to be of real service in the work of the Lord. Seek and accept an opportunity to serve. Never return to the old gang. Be an example. Let the young boys and girls see what a mission will do for a young man and never let them down. These, young, these youth in the ward and stake where you return will look up to you and expect great things of you. And if you live as you should, you will influence their lives for good as much as you have the lives of those with whom you've come in contact when you're in the service the service of your country or the service of your Lord. And encourage these, other, these young men with whom you meet when you come home to prepare themselves for missions, temple marriage, and the blessings that are available, available to faithful members of the church. Help them to overcome evil and temptation and to appreciate the priesthood that they hold and to sustain their leaders. That's the thing I hope these return men will do. Magnify your priesthood at all times. Honor and uphold womanhood. Never, never submit to temptation. Guard their virtue with your life if necessary. Never become discouraged or quit. As you continue active service, you will be more successful, more highly regarded, and happier than you will in any other way. And I wish to promise you, my young brethren, that if you will seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and be prepared to serve the Lord whenever you can, the Lord will bless you with greater success and happiness and contentment than you could possibly enjoy without. If you, you will do better in your schoolwork if you'll be active in the church and you'll be an influence in the world. A man with whom I'm associated as a director of one of the companies said to me the other day, he's, he's uh, representing the government now, he's been a very successful businessman in the lumbering industry. He said, we offered a job to, for a particular position, we, pardon me, we asked for applicants who were prepared to accept a certain job in the government. He said we had many applicants and we brought them down to 10. And as we were considering those 10, we noticed that one of, your, one of those was a member of your church and he said we took him just like that. I said, Ludy, why did you take him? He said, because we knew that he wouldn't be carousing at night. We knew that we could depend on him. We knew that he would do the work assigned to him. And I thought, what a tremendous thing if our young men all over would just realize that that is true. 
I could read you a letter here tonight, which I read to the, re the regional representatives, which I think I should read, just parts of it at least. Maybe I can tell you what is in it. The president of the mission, when I was over there, was telling me of the problems they had to their young men in the service because the bishops were not sending the recommends, and they didn't get the recommends for two or three months sometime after they had arrived. And there in Korea, the servicemen do not enjoy, in fact, they resent being there, and they become lonesome. And there are prostitutes there in great numbers. In fact, he told me that the common thing was for these soldiers to have a prostitute companion. And then he told me the experience where one of our priests, who was lonely there, he had not been too active, but how he became involved with one of these prostitutes. And then one of our young men who is living the gospel and who is interested in trying to save these young men contacted him, worked with him, and finally got him to acknowledge the value of the church, to repent of his doings, and strive to work as he should to be worthy of the blessings of the Lord. And then he said, if he could have just got hold of that boy when he arrived, how he could have helped him. He goes on to tell the experience of many of the young men there, and then how many of them bear testimony that it was because somebody met them and worked with them and gave them companionship and love that they were able to withstand the temptations that were so prevalent there. So brethren, you men who are bishops and stake presidents, when these young men go into this, when they go into school or leave home to go to school, be sure that you send their recommends and the information you have regarding them to that university or college. When they go into the armed services, for goodness sakes, for the sake of these young men, be sure that you are not too busy or that your interest is not keen enough that you would do all in your power to try to save one of these young men who is going into the armed services. And to these missionaries when they return, and the young men who are preparing, be close to them. Let your influence be felt. Encourage them. They're on fire when they return from their mission. Give them an opportunity to work. You know when they're returning. Meet them. Greet them. Love them. And give them an opportunity to work. I've had several examples of young men. One just last week, his mother said to me, my, when my boy returned from his mission, he wasn't given an opportunity to speak in the ward. He wasn't approached by the bishop other than to say, hello, it's good to see you home. And no one seemed to take an interest in him. She said, I really had to work with that boy to keep his interest up and his activity in the church. Brethren who are returning from these armed services, from school, from missions, Report to your bishops and prepare yourselves to be of service. And bishops, I appeal to you to see that the young people who leave your ward have sent with them or before them information to those schools, universities, the armed services, that, that is the young men of our church in the armed services, or the mission president, he'll get it to them so that they might know. May the Lord bless us, that we might realize the, the importance of a soul, and that we have them right in our midst, and it's our responsibility to keep them active, to encourage them, and to reach them if they are having problems. May we realize that the priesthood of God is the power of God given to us to act in His name. May we do it wisely, humbly, effectively. I humbly pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.